Today I want to show you guys how I, a backend dev, was able to take my UIs from looking like this, like unusably bad like this, to actually pretty good. And to be honest with you, it was actually pretty easy. All I'm doing here is leveraging Cloudinary and ShadCN for Svelte to create these really, really nice looking UIs with beautiful images. So today, I want to show you guys how to do that. To begin, I want to first talk about this products page and these little product cards that I put together. They're very basic. They don't have too much going on here, but there's a lot of subtle things we're doing in here that are making them look really nice. And I specifically want to talk about how the images are being loaded in. So full disclaimer, this series is sponsored by Cloudinary. Initially, I went into this and I was planning on building out this full stack e-commerce site. And from the beginning, I've been using Cloudinary. Uh, for over a year now, we've been using it at my 9 to 5. I had it planned out before they even contacted me about this. And then they reached out and said, hey, we have a brand new Svelte SDK. We'd love you to take a look at it and maybe sponsor a video for it. And I'm like, well, we're building out this full stack Svelte kit app. You guys want to sponsor the series? They said, sure. So now the only thing that has changed is I get to pay rent, but I would have used this regardless. So I want to hammer that home. I think it's a really, really great it's a great system, great for images. It's really grown on me over time. I think it's I think it's fantastic. So to begin, this is the product card. Uh, we're not gonna be going too deep into the actual inner workings of this app. Again, this is part of the deep dive series where we're gonna be having a deep dive for each individual part over time. So we're gonna have one for the authentication, one for the data layer, one for the admin page, all these different things will get their own individual breakdown, breakdowns on how it actually works. Uh, and today we're just breaking down the images and some basic UI stuff. So. These images right here, and again, we're only talking about the consumption of images, we'll get to the actual uploading of images later during the admin section. But to consume the images, we're gonna use the Cloudinary SDK. Now, they just put out a brand new Svelte Cloudinary SDK. It's really good. All we have to do to get it set up is we have to install the package, which is already installed in this project, and then we just have to set our public Cloudinary cloud name. My cloud name is InsiderViz, and that's just because we're also using this for some projects at InsiderViz. We're working on a blog site build out and a bunch of other things. We're gonna be using them for our images, also for like our social images, where like if you go to Twitter or something and you see the like picture that pops up, we're gonna use them for that. And they actually have that within the SDK, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna be using them for that stuff there. But regardless, all we have to do to set this up, grab our cloud name, install the package, set the environment variable, and we're done. So that's all I had to do to set this up. And now to actually consume it, we just have to use this cloud image component, and then we fill in a bunch of different properties. Now, the first thing you'll likely notice when you look at this is you're gonna see I have a div wrapping it that's setting the width and height to be 355 by 200, but then I'm actually pulling down the image at 355 times two and 200 times two. Now, this is something that's perplexed me about images for a while, because in the past when I would do images, I would have just set this to be 355 by 200, because that's the dimensions that I want for this image. I would have gone ahead and just done that. But the problem is, I have like a 4K monitor, but I'm scaling the resolution down to 1080p, so it'll pull down that image at 355 by 255, but then it's gonna get really blurry and gross, and it will not have that like, it won't have that crispness that these have. Because you can look at these pictures and you'll be like, yeah, that's a really crisp picture. It looks really good. And the way we're getting that is by bringing down the image at double the size we need and scaling it down. And that allows us to make sure that we handle for all the different device sizes and all the different scaling resolutions we have to deal with. So that's why we're doing that for the width and the height. Then for our cropping system, we're filling it because we want to crop it to fill into this. Cloudinary has a bunch of that stuff built in and just handles it for you, which is super nice. Then we just have some more basic stuff. We have all our alts, which is just a normal image alt. We have our sizes, which is just, I'm not doing anything with sizes right now. When we get into the mobile responsive part of this, which I am not. Not, not even remotely looking forward to. I hate doing mobile development stuff. But when we get into that part, this is where this will come in. But right now we don't really care. Then finally we have the class name, which is our rounded large in shadow medium to give it this nice little look over here. And then we have the source. The source is just the Cloudinary ID. And the way Cloudinary works is whenever you upload an image, that image will get an ID attached to it. So you can see within my products directory here, I have all these different pictures. So like I uploaded, I was doing some testing earlier and I uploaded this picture. So my public ID is this product slash PW, whatever. Hit copy, um, we'll just go ahead and showcase this. So we'll just hard code this to show you guys how it works. We hard code that in, we go back over here and now this will be the picture for all of them. Obviously we don't actually want that. So we're gonna switch this back to item data, but that's how it would work. But that's how it's working under the hood. The database is storing the Cloudinary IDs for all these different images. So. 
this is one of many different things that we're gonna be using Cloudinary for. We're using it on the admin page to do image uploads. We also are going to use it for some SEO stuff, but those are gonna be videos for another time. But for today, I just wanna show you guys how that image works. But what I also wanna show you guys is how ShadCN for Svelte works. The best page I think to really showcase this is gonna be the admin page. If we go to admin slash products, you're gonna see the this part is pretty similar to what it was before. Uh, I have some before and after pictures, but you know, it's cleaner. I have these nice delete buttons. Uh, Shad CN gives me this really great delete modal so I can pop this up. Yep, you can only delete this if you really want to. Then the place where it really shines is in this new product. So this looked awful before. And I wanna kinda of show you guys the process that I went through to actually build this so that I can hopefully help some of you recreate that to actually make some better UIs. Because like I said, I come from a backend developer background. I've never been good at making UIs. I've never been really good at design or anything like that. So being able to go into their documentation and effectively just go grab pieces off the shelf and put them in and use their examples to create usable UIs. And while obviously these aren't perfect UIs, and I'm sure in many production scenarios or in many larger company scenarios, you're going to have dedicated design teams, which will go in and do that for you. If you're working alone or you're learning or doing your own stuff, you're probably going to want to use something like this to help make your UIs look better. And some of you who have been around for a while will probably remember that I had a video way back when where I was talking about, I really don't like these UI libraries. And there is, I really need to make an apology video for that because I was wrong. I was absolutely wrong. So we'll talk about that another time. But for today, I wanna show you guys how this works. So this right here is a basic form. What I had before is I just had some blank, boring text boxes, name, product ID, price ID, price, and description. So I'm like, okay, how can we make these look better? Let's go into the metaphorical drawer and pull out what pieces we've got. So if we go down in here and let's go down to input. So I'm like, okay, uh, that's a nice looking input. I wanna do one with a label. So I have a label, email, email, okay. So all I have to do here is grab the code. So I grab all this code from here. You have to make sure that you uh, install it up here. They have a really good installation guide. I don't think that we need to go over how to do that in this video, but each component you have to go ahead and install. So we'll install this component and we'll jump back down here. We're gonna grab all this code and we're gonna go over to our admin page. So this is gonna be admin slash products uh, slash new. So page dot svelte. We're gonna go back over here. We're gonna jump down and we're gonna go ahead and paste that in. So this up here is gonna be for our name. What we would have done is we would have just pasted that email in and then we would switch out all the fields. So we'd put in name instead of email. We would add some basic stuff. Here I wanted to set my width to only be one third because this would have filled up all the way. It would have gone all the way over here. So I'm like, yeah, let's just put it to be one third. That makes sense. Then we go ahead and change everything else out. And now suddenly our input goes from looking really terrible to having a nice little piece placed in there. And the whole, basically, the whole way this the way this whole thing basically works is it basically feels to me like you're just, you have this little box of components and little things to work with, and you just wanna take those and just plop them into your UI where you need them. So whenever I need a button, I just pull out their button, I put it in, and then I can customize it, tweak it a little bit, but we just keep copy and pasting out of this component drawer effectively to scrap together these UIs, which actually have some semblance of competency to them, which I think is a huge thing that I've been lacking for a very long time. So we have that with the name up here. Then for the Stripe product ID, well here there's some more information because the Stripe product ID needs a little bit of context because we wanna make sure that the users are entering the correct product ID. So I wanna add this label. So when I go over here, I'm like, okay, what do we have? We have with text, oh, perfect. This is a great example of exactly what I want. Go in here, grab this code, go over here, paste in this code update it, change the values to what I want them to be. And from there, just keep rinsing and repeating and building out this nice little UI that actually looks competent. And of course, it's not gonna be perfect. Of course, it's gonna have problems, but I really love having this little box to just pick out of. I, um, I'm using it in a couple different places and also being able to go in here and being able to just go up here and grab this right here and copy off like the really great examples they give you. For those of you who didn't see my last video, I went ahead and built out a really nice little example app which does some Lucia authentication stuff. It's a precursor to the authentication we're going to be doing for the e-commerce site. And I use this as a sort of guide on how to make it. Obviously, it ended up looking a little bit different, and I think in a lot of ways it's not quite as nice, 
but it's really nice having these little guide these guides to actually make your UIs look decent. And um, it's something I've struggled with for a long time. So I just want to show you guys how I've sort of at least been semi overcoming this and getting to the point where, you know, I think this looks usable. I'm pretty proud of this. I like if I went to a site and I saw this, I'd be like, yeah, looks about right. So, um, yeah, I know this video was pretty short. I We kind of just went over some image stuff and went over some uh, Shad CN stuff, but I think it's really important. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe for future stuff coming within the deep dive. We're going to have much more of that coming out this week and next week. And uh, yeah, this project's coming along really well. I'm super excited for you guys to see the full thing working.